what's on my heart tonight to, to share with you is uh, um, uh, I kind of titled, if I would t- were to give it a title, uh, I, would, I would be, I'd call it How to Turn the Ship of Your Life. How to Turn the Ship of Your Life. Um, and, and I think that, I think that this is, uh, this is important. Turn with me, um, over to Hebrews chapter six, Hebrews chapter six. Oh man, I told, uh, Sophia, I try to stay still. She's running camera tonight. (laughs) So good luck with that. Hebrews chapter six and, um, and, and, let me let me kind of develop some thoughts and, and, and some ideas. You know, what as as we turn here, what what I, what I'm struck by that the the thought the, the this thought that's that 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 is just I just see it kind of this bigger bigger picture is is if you were to take a look at your life and you were to to see that it's headed in a particular direction. A particular course, and and maybe there are some things that uh, that that you don't like that's going on in your life right now. Maybe you don't uh, you you don't like you know uh, uh, maybe you've dealt with bouts of sickness, or maybe you're dealing with family issues, or maybe you're dealing with financial issues. Maybe some of these things tend to cycle over and over and over again in your life, and 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 so. You know, you're, uh, you you want to get out of this. You want to get out of that rut. You 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 just feel like that that you keep digging that that ditch further and further down. It's like, will I ever get out of this? I I know that Jesus said that I've come that you might have life, and have it more abundantly. And probably all of us, uh, to some degree or another, we have experienced uh, um, in some areas some of that abundant life. You know, we're not sitting here saying we've never experienced it. But, but what I believe that, that, uh, that Jesus has designed for uh, the believer is to experience the abundant life all the time and in every area. In Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man that, um, uh, that doesn't uh, walk after the counsel of the, of the ungodly, nor sits in the way of sinners, nor um, stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But it says in verse 2 that his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And then it goes on to say that he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Who's, who, let's just bring that up. Uh, Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Psalm chapter 1, verse 3. Um, because I want you to see it. I want you to see the result. Now, this was written to those that were under the law at the time, and so it was necessary for them to meditate in the law, but that was the only word of God that they had at the time. Now, for, for us as believers, we're not under law, uh, under the law of Moses, but we are under the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus, we're also under the law of love, you know, and we're also under the law of liberty. But all of these things and an understanding of these things come out of uh, the revelation that we find in the Word of God. In the beginning, in the beginning, it wasn't the law. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and, 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 and all things were created by the Word. And so for us... As believers, we were born again. Man, I, got, I don't want to run. I'm, I'm going to be good. I'm, Sophia, I'm going to be really good. All right, I'm not going to run. Uh, uh, um, we were born again with the incorruptible seed Amen. of the Word of God. The Word of God, when, you, when received, okay, um, Man, I'm just taking. I'm just. I'm taking my time. Gonna take a little time while I develop this for a second. The Bible says that 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 these are they which are sown on good ground. Talking about Mark chapter four, the sower sows the word, and 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 so uh, we find that in the kingdom of heaven, so is the kingdom of heaven. Mark chapter uh, four, verse twenty-six. So is the kingdom of heaven, as if a man should cast seed 
into the ground. So, so Jesus is using this whole chapter in Mark's, Mark to talk about seed that is sown into our lives. But, but the, the condition of the ground is the condition of our heart. And he says that those that are, uh, that are sown on good ground are those that, that hear the word, they keep the word, they, they, they receive the word in an honest and good heart. They understand it, Matthew. So if you were to put Matthew 13, Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 8, the, different, the three different versions of the, of the parable of the sower together, you see that really those, those that on good ground are those that hear the word. They, they, they make it a point to understand what's being taught so that they can receive it fully into their heart. And then it says that they keep the word. They do what they hear. And, and as a result, they bear fruit. The word of God bears fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. And so we were born again with the incorruptible seed of the word of God. What happened? You heard the word of God that Jesus came to set you free, to deliver you, to cause you to live that abundant life. Whatever you heard, some of you heard that if you didn't get Jesus, you're going to hell. So some of you didn't exercise faith. You got saved out of fear. But either way, you, you, you made a decision, right? And, but, but honestly, when you heard it, you did exercise faith to, to at least receive Jesus into your life. And what happened when you heard that word and you received it into your heart, because there's a lot of people that hear the word, but they don't receive the word. They hear it, but they don't allow it to, to penetrate their heart. They say, I don't want anything to do with, with that. Uh, um, this word is, is, you know, is too difficult. I don't want to change my life here. They don't receive the word that is able to say the, uh, uh, James puts it this way, the engrafted word receive with meekness the engrafted word that is able to save your soul. You can hold your finger here in Hebrews, but just since it's a few pages over, let's just look at James uh, chapter 1 for a moment, and, and, and let's, let's get this. Let's lay this foundation first before I kind of dig into to, to turning the ship of your life. Um, in verse 21, he says, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, um, the Amplified puts it this way, so get rid of all uncleanness. Uh, get rid of, don't allow those things to, to stay attached to your life. See, what you, what you hear, what you, what you surround yourself with, you're, you're, you're constantly having seed that is being sown into your life. All right? And so... He says, so get rid of all uncleanness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. Get rid of it. Don't let it be a part of your life. And he says this, and back to the King James, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. What does that mean? What, what is meekness? It means you don't know it all. You recognize, I don't know it all. I don't, I don't got it all. I'm, you know, God says, God says, children, honor your father and your mother. Honor your parents that it may be well with you. Yeah, but I don't feel like it. Yeah, but they were mean to me. Yeah, but, you know, and even, even adults, honor your parents. Even if they disagree with you. Even if you disagree with them, still show honor to them. Let me, let me help you with this for a moment. The Bible says, give honor to whom honor is due. It does not say give honor to whom honor is earned. And a lot of times we, we feel like they haven't earned the right for us to honor them. And, and, and so I'll give them honor when they start acting right. No, there's only one way to determine who to give honor to and God's that determining factor. He has said in his word to honor the king. He has said in his word to honor those leaders. He has said in his word to honor, we honor the Lord. We honor, we honor each other. We, we honor those that, uh, that God has put in the rule over us. We honor our parents. And we do that because God said to do it, and he didn't say do it based on their lifestyle, see. So, so there'll be, 
so we have an opportunity here to take this word and say, yeah, but you don't know what my parents did to me. So are you going to receive with meekness? Meekness would say, I don't want to do it, but I'm going to humble myself under the mighty hand of God. And humility says, I'm going to go God's way and I'm going to receive the, with meekness the engrafted word. See, that word, when it gets in your heart, it just, man, it, it, it grabs onto your heart and it begins to grow in your heart. You were born again with the incorruptible seed of the word of God. What did it do? It produced a change in your life. The word of God will produce a change in your life if you make a decision to receive the Word of God into your heart regarding every area of your life. Now, back to um, uh, Psalm 1-3 for a moment, uh, because I asked them to pull that up. Psalm 1-3. And so when he says, so we meditate in the Word day and night. Why? What we're doing is, is we're allowing the seed of the Word of God to penetrate our heart so that it can produce change in our lives. It's a discovery process. I'm not... I, I'm not doing something to get God to do something. All I'm doing is, is I'm, my spirit man has already been changed. I'm perfect. I'm whole. I'm righteous uh, because Jesus is there and I'm sealed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right? But, what my, but, but my heart isn't my spirit. My heart is maybe a combination of my spirit and my soul. I am getting, I've got two sources of information that is working in my life, okay? I've, I've got my environment, I've got my past, I've got what my teachers have told me, I've got my education, I've got what my parents have told me, and, uh, and I've got what the world is constantly talking to me about. And so that information allows me to now, say, make a decision. But at the same time that I've got this external information that comes through the five senses in, I've also got a knowing on the inside of me. The Bible says that I have an unction from the Holy Ghost that I know all things. I already know, deep down, I know what I need to know. I have a teacher. He is the Holy Ghost. And so I have, I have two different voices that I can listen to. All right, I can listen to that external or I can listen to the internal, the spirit man. And what happens as that information, as those two uh, uh, voices come in and I got information now, my heart takes all of that and it devises my way. My heart, it, your heart, you choose which way you're going to go. And so what, what we want to do is, is, is we want to receive into our heart the seed of the word of God. Now, when we do that, it says this, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. He brings forth fruit in his season. And look at this. It says that his leaf also shall not wither, but whatsoever he does shall prosper. Now, what I love about this is he didn't say that uh, the tree won't die. He didn't even say that, uh, um, you know, that the branch wouldn't wither. He went to the smallest part in a tree and said not a single leaf will wither. And what that says to me is the most insignificant detail in your life that God is interested in and that the Word of God should go to the smallest details so that you experience the life of God, so that you experience the health of God, you experience the way of God, you experience His total abundance in every single area. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be excited about uh, a success in this area and be okay with, well, this area is not that great, but we're at least experiencing God over here. See, thank you, Father. Is this helping you? Yes, thank you. I mean, we're just kind of digging into some things tonight. See, um, we can get comfortable. We can get comfortable. That's not the right word. 
we can get complacent with uh, with the way things are in our lives. We can we can be okay with just existing in some areas and not really stretching forth and experiencing God's best in every area. We can, we can get 50% results or we can have half of our life that's great and the other li- half we're like, well, we're experiencing such greatness here, I can put up with this. Or maybe we can push forward to a 60%. Or maybe some of us should be so super spiritual that 80% of our life is just going awesome. And we still have that 10% or that 20% that, that, but, but we're mostly there. So I'm okay. So you, you're okay with 10 or 20% of your leaves withering, of just existing, see. We can, we can get very, really complacent, particularly for some of us who have been in the Word for as long as we have been. For some of us that have uh, lived life in the Word and, 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 and somewhere along the way, we, we didn't get some of the results that we were praying for. We don't know why some of the things came against us the way that they did. We don't know why we had some of the experiences that we did. And, and so if we're not cautious, um, we'll allow those things to shape our future and, and, we'll, we'll, and, and, and uh, we'll be hesitant to step out into the things of God again. We'll be hesitant to trust. Again, we'll, uh, I would rather, I'd rather uh, uh, cocoon myself, I'd rather uh, um, protect myself from possible disappointment again. And so to protect myself from disappointment, I'm going to stop going for it. I'm going to stop praying for things. I'm going to stop being aggressive concerning the word of God in my life. And, and, and so what we end up doing is we just end up just living and not living the abundant life that God has for us. It's really quiet in here right now, okay? So, so the question then becomes, how do, we, how do we change those mindsets? What I see is, is this ship like a cruise ship. I'm talking about a big, 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 big ship. And, and so you, that's, that's your life. It's been going this direction. It's been going this course, um, you know, your whole life for years and years and years and years. How do you change that? How do you turn that and, 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 and turn it in a way that, that is permanent? Turn it in a way that you begin to really experience the life of God in those areas. And, and so next week, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. I want to give you some practical things that, that, um, that Jennifer and I have, have, have learned over the years um, that has truly changed the course, course of our life. And, and so... You know, because these were the questions that we asked. These were the things that, that, that we, we experienced. And, and, and so uh, we saw more failure than we saw success. Let me say that again. We, we saw more failure than we saw success and victory. And so what happened was um, we stopped trying to succeed. So that we wouldn't have any more failure. I'm just I'm, I'm being real with you. All right. So, so in Hebrews six, and I love this. Um, it says that. Uh, let's see. Let's look at verse. Um, let's just go to verse thirteen and start there. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, come on. He's like, I got nothing better. I mean, you know, you could say, I, I, you know, I I, I swear on my mama's, you know, uh, loaf of bread, or I swear, you know, we'll find things. I swear, you know, on, on my life or whatever. God had nobody greater to swear by than himself. 
And so he said, he said, uh, he said, I'm putting my name, I'm putting everything that I am to this Abraham, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. And then verse 15 says, so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. After Abraham had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Now, let's, let's get into the mind of Abraham for just a moment. God comes to him, says, I want you to go out into a land that I will show you. This is in Genesis chapter 12. And I'm going to bless you. I will multiply you. I'll bless him that blesses you. I'll curse him that curses you. And so the Bible says Abraham obeyed. Abraham went out. Hebrews 11 says that Abraham went out uh, not knowing where he was going, but looking for a city whose, whose, whose builder was God. And then it says this, that if those that had gone out had been mindful of where they had come, they would have had an opportunity to return. Can, can we look at that for a moment? Man, I just, I, I just feel like taking my time and, and, and digging into some of this. Is this, is this okay? Um, in Hebrews 11... And, and so he had talked about um, these things, but it says in verse 15, it says, And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from where they came out, they would have had opportunity to have returned. Now, what this means is that Abraham made a, a decision, made a commitment that I'm going with God. I'm leaving everything behind that I have known. I'm, living, I'm leaving my way of life behind. I'm leaving my family behind. I am going with God. What God says is most important in my life. Do you remember when, when Jesus was there talking to the crowd, surrounding by the crowd, and his mother and his brothers were trying to get in to see him? And so finally they got word to his disciples, and the disciples came to him and says, your mother and your brothers, they're looking for you. You know, they, they need to talk to you. And, and Jesus said, who, are, who is my mother and my brothers? And he looked around to the crowd and he said, but they, they keep the word of God. You know, why? He was on a mission. He was doing what his father said. His, his family didn't keep him from obeying what the father, even at age 12, didn't you know I would be about my father's business? And so Abraham had made this same decision, I'm going after God. And we find out that immediately when he left, there was a famine in the land. Immediately. You look it up in Genesis chapter 12. I think I talked about this a few weeks ago. Immediately when he left, it says there was a famine in the land. Now, he could have, he could have been like some of us. You know, he could have been like, well, well, oh, man, if God's calling me to this kind of life, I'm going back to where my daddy, where my daddy stuff is. I, I, got, I, got, I got opportunities back home. The devil is fighting me. <laughs> All right, now, Jennifer, we, you, you don't want me to take that rabbit trail. <laughs> Jennifer said this. Or he could have said, man, oh, this is, uh, would you look at your toes? Are you okay? Are your toes healed today? Brother, your shoes are off. I don't know if you're ready for this one. I'm just kidding. Or, or, man, as soon as I go after the things of God, the devil attacks me. You know, sometimes uh, we, we hear it over and over and over again that, that because I'm, uh, I'm going after the things of God that, that, you know, if you're not being attacked, then you're not doing the will of God. Yeah. People, people have more faith in the devil to attack them than in God to keep them. And, and so, you know, the fact of the matter is, is Jesus destroyed him. Uh, he, he, we are blood bought. There is a bloodline that Satan can't get through. I'm, I'm behind, yeah, it's the kingdom of God, but I'm behind, the, it's the border of the kingdom that Satan has no access. He can't, just, he can't just pop in and say, 
I'm attacking you, and then pop back out. He doesn't have that. But because, but because we've developed this theology in, 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 in our Christian circles that the devil's always attacking, attacking, attacking. Now, is the devil, is, 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 does he exist today? Yes. Does he, does he try to, does he try to uh, attack Christian? Yes. But how? Why did you start this? Why did you start this? But, but, but how? But how does he do it? You listen. I, 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 I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to mess with your thinking for a moment. If you look at the Bible, and if you let's just take the life of Paul, and Paul talked about get, having a thorn in the flesh, and he said, "For the abundance of revelations that I ha- that, that have been given to me, lest I be exalted above measure, there was there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me." Now. What did that demonic spirit that, that Satan assigned to Paul's life, what did he do? Everywhere Paul went, he stirred up the crowds against them. He caused persecution and affliction to happen through other people. So Satan still has access to other people to try to affect Your life. He talks about the God of this world that blinded the minds of people. All right? But it's not through demonic oppression. It's not through uh, uh, being able to just at his, uh, you know, at some purpose. I don't want to go into all of this right now. But, but... I guess I could do part two next week. But, all right, think about it this way. Man, 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 man. Okay. How many of you think that Satan is accusing us before God night and day? Anybody? Well, then y'all just made my job real easy because let me tell you something. Most Christians think, call, still call him the accuser of the brethren, still see him doing like he did to Job and accusing Job before God, and still having access into heaven, you know. And, and so the fact of the matter is because of what Jesus did in Revelations, it says that the accuser of the brethren has been cast out of heaven, and he was cast onto the earth. And, it's, and the reason that that happened, and we know it happened, it says now has come the salvation of our God. And, and he's talking about what happened at the cross. And what happened at the cross is that heaven was shut up to, to, to Satan forevermore. He does, he can't, Jesus took all of our accusation. Yes, Jesus took all of our judgment. Yes, Period. So, you know, uh, um, we've, we've allowed this picture to be painted that, um, uh, um, that, 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 that Jesus is there, that Satan comes into the courtroom of God and Jesus is our lawyer. And so what he does is he argues on our behalf. And that's not the way it is. Jesus took it all. He defeated the devil forever. And so now we are in him. So for, for Satan to have, be able to have access into my life, he would, be able to, he would have to have, be able to have access into Jesus. But see, okay, so, so now let me get back on topic for a second. All right, this will help you with, with changing the course of your life. So uh, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to close this in 10 minutes. Ooh, yes. Here we go. So Abraham, track with me now, Abraham... Even though he, he went out, he was not mindful of where he came from. He had made a commitment in his life that I'm going with God. Yeah. A famine came in the land. It wasn't the devil attacking Abraham. A famine attacked everybody. Okay? Guess what? Stuff happens in the world. The world is still under a curse. The world, there are things that go on in people's lives. You know, and the Bible says that a thousand will fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come nigh me. But we'll see it. We'll see some of these things. But if we don't get in fear of it, 
You know, a good man will not fear when evil news comes, when evil tidings comes. Why? His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. See? So the famine came, and what did Abraham do? He, he, he adjusted, but he still held on to that promise. God said, I will bless you. I will bless you. So he went into Egypt. And he came out and it says with silver and gold and cattle and something happened during that time of famine that caused Abram to be very, very rich. It's the blessing of God that was on his life. But he had to make a decision. His heart had to say, I'm going with God. I am not mindful of where I came from. I, there's not a plan B. I don't have a fallback plan. I am going with God. And so then it says here in Hebrews that after that, that, that what he did, uh, let's go back here and look at it. And, and so it says that, and so after verse 15, he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So, so there, there was some time. See, the Bible talks about seed time and harvest. You sow seed into your life. You're going to harvest those things, all right? Now, he talks about uh, uh, in verse 17, wherein God willingly, a willing, more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise. <laughs> Were those heirs of promise? Glory to God. I mean, you get this from the heart of God. To show unto the heirs of promise the immutability, the unchangeableness of his counsel. He doesn't change. Yes. If he did it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. If he did it for Jesus, he's done it for you. Ooh, that's, that, that'll preach a plum in the next week. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ. He confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable or unchangeable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. He wanted you to see so much how this is on his heart. He said that we have this strong consolation who's fled for refuge to lay hold upon this hope that is set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of our soul. That's, that's our heart. That's our emotions. That's our mind, this hope of, of the unchangeable nature of God and what he has promised. And he says it's both sure and steadfast, and it enters into that within the veil. Now, uh, um, there, there, there's another scripture. I believe it's over in Hebrews chapter 10. Let's take a look at it real quick here. And, and then I, I'm going to talk to you for a moment. So in verse 36, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, it says this, For you have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, there it is, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. There, there, there's a time from that you sow the seed in your life to the time that you reap the harvest of these things. Now, now to come back to the illustration of the ship. Now, James chapter 3 talks about uh, um, turning the ship and, it, and, and, and that your tongue is like the rudder that turns the ship. But I, I want to broaden that for a moment, and, 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 and I believe this will help you. Uh, if you're on a cruise ship and you're the captain of that cruise ship and you decide that you're going to another destination, when you turn that, that wheel, it, it, that cruise ship doesn't turn on a dime and go in that direction. If it did, you would lose all, all the people on the ship. <laughs> but uh, it, it doesn't do it. It, why? it takes some time. Yeah, once, you, once you turn it and those rudders you know, dig into the water there, then, then it, it begins that turn. It begins that turn. And, and, and so, but you keep that pressure on the water and, and it begins that turn until finally you find yourself going in the direction that, that you originally intended to go. Seven years ago, Jennifer and I had come into a place where as, as we started getting... Um, uh, revelation of, of the grace of God. See, I, I'm the one, I'm the guy that had retreated. I'm the guy that had stopped, you know, stepping out. I'm the guy that didn't dare to dream anymore. I'm the guy that every time we prayed, uh, you know, when we were sick, we stayed sick, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and didn't seem to uh, see anything. And so I'm the guy that, while I could do all the nice things in church, that inwardly 
the, my, my expectation was zilch. It was negative. My outlook in life was negative. So uh, to, to avoid negative things happening, I just stopped trying to think about it, stop, you know, that kind of thing. But as I got a hold, as I got an understanding of the unchangeable nature of God and who he is and what he has said, there comes a point that, that through all the disappointment, through all the hurt, through all the, I, through all the unanswered questions that you say, that, that you make a decision in your heart, I'm going to be steadfast with the things of God, that you say that my life, the ship of my life has gone this direction. And, 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 and if, as long as I continue to, to exist or think this way, I'm going to keep going this direction, but I've had enough. And so I'm going to, I'm going to believe God again. I'm going to trust God again. I'm going to do this according to the word again. And, and I'm going to let the past be the past. And I'm, I'm, going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to start praying for healing again. I'm going to start expecting to be healed again. And, and not only that, but I'm going to start expecting good things to happen in my life again. And I'm going to, I'm going to start dreaming and, 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 and expecting that God is all of a sudden just going to be involved in my life to a degree that like it's never been. I'm just going to ex start expecting that based on what he has said and based on his words. And, and so Jennifer and I began to make this shift. We, we made the change in our heart first. Listen to me. We made the decision inside our heart, the rudder of our heart first to turn. It receive with meekness the engrafted word. Live the word in our lives. And I got to tell you that as soon as we did it, let me tell you what happened in our life. Nothing. No change. No change. No change except for what had gone on on the inside of us. The ship of your life is determined by the condition of your heart. All right? And what you believe deep down and what you've made a decision deep down to do and to live is going to determine the course of your life. I'm not talking about something external. I'm not talking about just saying the word and just doing the word. I'm talking about not being mindful of the past, not being mindful from where you came from, having your mind more full of what thus saith the Lord is, and, and, and you know, come hell or high water or whatever, I'm going with God. And I'm going to trust God. And I pray, and, 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 there's, and, and there's not an answer. I'm still going with God. And, and, I, and I'm believing, and I didn't get what I was believing for. I'm still going with God. And, and I'm going to be steadfast with him. And I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to find out, God, if you are real. And if what, you're said is, if what you said is real. And if I'm wrong, then you're going to have to show me where I'm wrong. But you got to know I'm going with you. And I'm expecting great things to happen. And let me tell you what happened over the course of about two years. Slowly. For us. It didn't have to be slow, but this is what happened for us. Slowly, the course of our life began to change. And what we started seeing is all of a sudden some good things started happening in our lives. And God started talking to us. And, and you know, but it doesn't mean that we still saw everything, but then, but it continued to change. And it continued to change. And so after two years of this, two years, but it don't matter if it was five years, it don't matter if it was 10 years, we made a decision. This is the way we're going to live our life. After two years of it, guess what? Our, our whole, the whole course of our life changed, and now we're going in the right direction. It doesn't mean that we're still not shoring up some areas here and some areas here, and we're letting God minister to us in different areas that, 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 that more of his life can flow in, but by and large, the course of our life is headed in the right direction. See? We were steadfast. I'm going to dream. I'm going to expect. And that's the way that we live our life. To the point that even today. So, so 
uh, um, just little things. When I say about little leaves, check this out, man. God is so amazing. Yes, he is. Guys, he is so interested in your life. Seth, his heart's desire as he decides to go on a missions trip at Karis is, is, to, is to go to Germany. He wanted to go on the Germany missions trip. And so, uh, don't cry. And, and so, anyway, um, and, and, but they, he didn't have his passport. They're waiting for the passport before. So he texts me, all caps, Monday, I got the Germany trip. And we're like, oh, son, that is great. That is awesome. And so anyway, uh, somebody here in the church uh, had called me earlier this week and, and said, um, I've got a, a missionary that's going to be in town that I know, and I'd like for him to meet you. I'm like, great, we'll set it up. And, and so we met at 9 o'clock this morning. And so this gentleman uh, began to talk about his vision. And, and the name of his missions organization is European Initiative. And, and so, and, and going through his story and how God put this on his heart, just an amazing story and, and, and started talking about being connected with Karis and, and they're based out of Germany. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I said, what? They said, yeah, we're, ba- we're based out of Germany, you know. And I said, and Karis does missions trips with you? Yeah. I said, my son's going on that trip. He's going to be at your place. And, and I talked to Seth. Yeah, that's who he's going with. Oh, wow. And so here, here, the Lord, I mean, this guy is not even from Birmingham. Wow. Happened to be here. And so I got the opportunity to connect with the ministry that, that, that God is, is, is that Seth's going to be going with. And the ministry is amazing. And we're going to begin to partner with them at Life of Faith Church wow. with European Initiative and have other opportunities, you know, I, I didn't ask for that. I didn't need to have that. Uh-huh. But God says, God. I'm going to do something. Yes. Let me let you know that your son's taken care of when yes. he goes on this missions trip. Yes. Ah, just amazing at the goodness of God. Yes. And um, so we're kind of, um, kind of messed up a little bit yes. right now. So, you know, just but, but these things, these are the things that have been happening for the last five to six years. Yes. Little things. Here, there, and the other. Just good things. And now every situation that comes is another opportunity for God to get glory. For God to, you know, do, do, do we have all the answers? No. You know, but you know what? What we have decided is, man, this is fun to let God just move in our lives and to expect good things and to, and to, and to no longer allow no longer allow the questions of why this why this why this god just show me things just you know show us what we need to know but we just want to let you love on us uh because that's who he is it says that in the ages to come that he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through christ jesus